on this episode of Bondi Vet. Chris's cutting edge solution for a gammy goat. Oldest goat in Australia, oldest goat in the world, who knows? The man spending every last dollar to save his deformed friend. I'm gonna have to go into debt. And meet one of Bondi's most eccentric characters. Oh yes, you know, he's very bossy little, little bastard. At the Bondi Clinic, vet nurse Tonya has arrived for work with her pet ferrets, Baby and Jack. Sarah brings in her dog every day, Neil brings in his dogs. I bring my ferrets in, Mel brings in her rats and her bunnies, so it's awesome. We all get to hang out with each other. It's a really good environment. Good morning, Mrs Corswell. It's Neil here from the Vet Hospital. I'm just ringing to let you know, I'm just coming around shortly to pick up Charlie and Dr Chris Brown will be coming in to say hello to you. How do you think Charlie's going? I, to me, he looks like he's certainly getting worse. He's, he's definitely deteriorating. Neil and I are picking up little Charlie today. He's a delightful little nine-year-old King Charles Cavalier Spaniel, but he's got a really serious heart condition, and there's no cure. It's got that real tropical feel, doesn't it? Charlie's owner is a favourite at the clinic, simply known as Mrs Corswell. Hello, Mrs Corswell, it's Neil here. Hello. Hey, Charlie, you're our boy. The sick Charlie and his mate Mr Bojangles are the centre of the 88-year-old's existence. Just seems though Mrs Corswell can't actually hear us. Just coming. Okay. Yes. Hello. Neil and the other staff often run errands for Mrs Corswell and we've even made up this chart so she can follow all the medication that little Charlie needs. And the sugar and the Panadol you wanted. I'll, I'll pop those I'll... in for you, OK? Thank you so much. I'll just pop those there. She's an amazing oh, lady. She really takes great care of those pets. It's a bit worrying for me, I suppose, sometimes, because I worry whether she's taking care of herself. In the past, Charlie and Mrs Corswell have battled for dominance. Very regal. Oh, yes, you know, he's very bossy, little, little mm. bastard, you know, to start off with. But the older he got, the more, more he needed affection and realised that he did depend on me. Yeah. Now, Mrs Corswell is as eccentric as they come, but an absolute joy to be around. You never quite know what you're going to get with her. I think he's, um existing on a will to live. Charlie has a leaking heart valve which can't be fixed. It's now just a matter of time. OK. Come on, Charles. All right, that's it. Each week we take Charlie to the clinic to drain all that fluid from his abdomen. It's just to try and relieve the pressure on his circulation because his heart is already struggling so much. He's so special and obviously so is Mrs Corswell. And yeah, we go that extra mile for them. Sweetie, come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. At a nearby park, Angus is taking his eight month old puppy Rosie for a walk. I can tell the little flippers start to get tired. Every day, that's becoming harder and harder for this severely deformed golden retriever. The problem with her paws has deteriorated. I, you know, I can see that she's finding it more difficult to walk on those paws. Two weeks ago, Angus saw an ad selling the dog for $100. He soon found out why she was going so cheap. I knew something had happened to her paws. I wasn't sure whether it was trauma um, or maybe a congenital thing. The owner at that time told me that um, he hadn't fed her properly and so I was perhaps wondering whether it might be rickets. Despite her disability, Angus fell in love with Rosie. I think it was a case of love at first sight. She chose me and I chose her. In terms of Rosie's future, she certainly can't exercise as a normal dog, she can't get upstairs, and I just think those, those things are going to get worse. Following a check-up at the Bondi Clinic, Rosie has been referred to the small animal specialist hospital, SASH. Come on. So I'm determined to do what I can for her. Good girl, Rosie. Well, there it is. Stuck right across the back of his pellet. At SASH, Vet Lisa Chimes is dealing with a Springer Spaniel in serious trouble. Ouch, are you going to let me grab that without sedating you? 
Obus has a bone wedged in the back of his throat. Getting it out is going to be difficult and painful. Generally, dogs don't let you put your hands in their mouth, particularly if there's something stuck in there and they're distressed about it. So often they will have to be sedated for it, but Obus seems like he's got a pretty good nature, so hopefully we'll be able to do it conscious. It's OK, darling. Good. Nice to meet you, Andrew. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Come on in. OK, sure. And this is Rosie. Look at those legs. Good. Come on, let's have a look at you. At the Bondi Referral Hospital SASH, Angus meets specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski to see what can be done for Rosie's deformed legs. What, what you're going to find with her is we'll end up putting some frames on her legs um, and essentially breaking her leg or, or cutting it, the yes. bone, which will allow us to sort of gradually straighten it out and lengthen it. But let's say, we'll take some x-rays and we'll see. It's serious in the sense that I think it's life-threatening if it goes on for much longer. She won't be able to walk around, she'll be in chronic pain. And from a, uh, an ethical point of view, you just wouldn't be able to keep her alive. X-rays show Rosie has a bone disease which has damaged her growth plates. This is an extreme case. The good side about all this is there's something we can do. The downside is it it's, can be quite expensive. Yes, um, yes. And I think your $100 dog is going to turn into something a little bit more than that. How am I going to get the money together for this operation? A very, very good question, but I'm going to have to talk to family and friends. Um, I'm going to have to go into debt. Oh. OK, see you, Rosie. See you later. Come on, Chicken. You and me. Come, Rose. Good girl. Good girl. You know, it's a lifetime commitment taking on an animal and uh, it's something now that I feel I have to take some responsibility for. There we go. All right, hon, we're going to make you feel a lot better. In the treatment room, Lisa and Nurse Victoria are struggling with the stuck bone. <laughs> Nothing is working to dislodge it and Obus is becoming more and more distressed. Lisa doesn't want to sedate him, but she's running out of options. It's OK, darling. Good boy, Abbas. Good boy. He's pretty stuck. Good boy. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh you're very brave. Oh. Very brave. Look at that. Oh, my God. No, you don't want to eat it again. That's sharp on the edges. <laughs> There's a bit of controversy over whether you give a bone to a dog, but definitely no cooked bones. And with raw bones, I would be supervising the dogs while they're eating it and give the bones according to their size. Good boy, good boy, good boy. You've got little aliens swimming in water, but they are actually intestinal loops. Chris and Neil have just picked up the terminally ill Charlie from his 88-year-old owner, Mrs Causewell. Each of those lines there is one centimetre, so we've got one, two, three centimetres of fluid. The ultrasound graphically shows the fluid that has flooded into his abdomen. He's got a, a leaking valve, so each time his heart pumps blood, some leaks back through that, that leaking valve. As a result, he gets a, a build-up of, of fluid in his circulation, which you can see here, that's why he looks as though he's had a few too many pies down here, but that's just all fluid. Now this is actually going to cause a bit of coughing too, so we don't want to do it for too long. It's a very big heart, at least eight centimetres across for a small dog. I mean, it's almost a balloon that's sitting in his chest. Sorry, puppy. He's just got this huge heart that pushes up on his lungs. So and how, how big should it be, Chris? Probably two thirds that size, even half that size. Okay. His heart's just really doing its best to keep up and, and unfortunately it just can't really keep up enough. The motorised suction pump is like a vacuum cleaner, sucking out nearly two litres of fluid from the spaniel's bloated belly. It gives Charlie real breathing space, keeping him alive. Just always in amazement at this process. He's only eight kilos, yet Charlie each week produces over a litre, almost two litres of fluid. It's amazing he has the energy to even produce that fluid, let alone keep on living. It's, he's just a, a little wonder. 
it is hard watching him deteriorate. You know, he's such a lovely dog. He had lots of personality. It makes me sad just thinking about it. You know, all of the... In the operating theatre at Sash, Rosie's major surgery is about to begin. In a month or so, she wouldn't have a life because she just wouldn't be able to walk around. This surgery would be life-changing for her. Her owner, Angus, has managed to come up with the $6,000 for this complex operation. All right, let's go. When I'm actually breaking her leg or cutting the bone, that's got to be just right. During this extreme operation, Rosie's front legs will be broken. If you were a human, you'd be in hospital for weeks after this. So it's very major surgery, especially for a young dog. So we're just about to put the frame on the bone. Metal rods will be drilled through both legs into adjustable frames. Rosie's legs will then be slowly realigned and straightened. In a couple of days' time, we'll start winding this. And so that will take that angle of that ring from there, like that, and that will also change the angle of the leg from that to that. It's not enough for Andrew to be a specialist surgeon. He has to be a whiz in geometry as well. That alignment's pretty good. So that's about right height-wise, so drop it a bit. Very fiddly work, yeah, but you can't overdo it. You sort of become obsessed with making it look perfect and it's just not gonna happen. I've learned that. I'm not perfect. Two hours later, and Rosie's new leg frames are finally in place. So now what I'm gonna do is break this radius so that we'll be able to straighten the leg out gradually over the next couple of weeks. Three and a half hours later and oh, it's gone very well. I mean, this part of it's finished, absolutely, but uh, as I said, Angus's part starts now. It's fair to say it's probably the most exclusive residence you like to do a house call to. It's very flash. After treating Charlie, Chris is off to see another senior citizen at historic Vaucluse House. I always get nervous whenever I see my uh, <laughs> special lady. Yes. Well, there she is now. Let's try and catch her and see how she's looking up close. <laughs> oh, good step. That was a good step. OK, you want pace? I'm going to give you pace. Naomi, who cares for the animals on the estate, has asked Chris to check up on their resident pensioner. I just think it's incredible how old Lady is. Goats in the wild would only live to around seven years of age, whereas Lady's 18 or even 19. She's got to be some sort of record breaker. Oldest goat in Australia, oldest goat in the world, who knows, but she is incredible. So looking over her, she's actually doing OK, but the issue seems to be down here, in this lower part of her leg here. So that joint is, is basically seized, seized, seized up. up. Full difference. Yeah, I mean, that one's quite loose. Hoppy, almost, yeah. in Paris. Exactly, whereas that one's just rock hard. So that's just, that'd be arthritis. You can actually see how front hooves are bent over, which makes her walk like a muscle man. Now, the issue with that is that she's actually going to start wearing down just one side of the joint, and eventually arthritis is going to take hold, and she may, in the future, just not be able to walk at all. At Sash, Rosie's epic operation is over. Her deformed legs have been broken. Now her long road to recovery begins. She's going to be sore, um, so we'll be making sure that she's got plenty of pain relief on board, that she's got plenty of padding around the, the pins and, and the leg. Can you grab me the bolt cutters, please? Yep. Ooh. The metal frames on Rosie's legs will need to be adjusted every day for the next three weeks. It will then take the fractured legs another six weeks to heal. A long journey for Rosie and Angus. I, to be honest, I think Rosie will probably cope with it better than Angus will. But we'll see. Oh, wow. Well, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Who's here? Oh, Rosie. So we just want to... She gets stuck. You just need to sort of move her a little. Despite being warned, Angus is shocked by Rosie's condition. I'm a bit spun out, to be honest with you. God, she's been through a lot. 
Oh no, eh. <sighs> sorry. I didn't expect to cry. I don't cry very often, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You're handling this better than me, darling. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I bet you weren't last night, though. Now you're a good girl, Rosie. You're a good girl. Oh, darling. At Forcluse House, Chris is checking out a serious problem affecting Lady, one of the world's oldest goats. There's no point being gentle around here. So we've confirmed it's arthritis, but she's still got one underlying issue. She's walking unevenly, so we need to do something about that. Yeah, OK, look, I agree. She doesn't look as though she loves the whole power tool idea. She's almost giving this look, what are you doing now? But it will help, because it's going to even off those hooves and make sure she distributes her weight evenly. We do this quite often on cows okay, and, and occasionally on horses. They put up with the noise, but um, yeah, it's, we could say it's an Australian first on a goat. <laughs> At Sash, Rosie is back on her feet. She's a great little patient and she's, um, no, she's lovely and great temperament. And, you know, she's a good candidate for this sort of surgery because she is so accepting. You're not a lightweight, Rosie. Her legs are now being straightened in metal frames, and Surgeon Andrew is about to show Angus how to adjust them at home. I've got a little wrench here which you're going to have to take home with you. Oh, you're going to be a bit of a rig of war, aren't you? Now, I've got to go clockwise. That's so right. Going this way. So That's I've got right. one there. So if, yeah. if I just... One, yeah. two... And you've got to make sure you're going the right way. Sounds a silly thing to say, but... Um, you don't want them getting worse. Yeah, OK. Here we go. Here you are, Rosie. Time to go home. You are just looking at me going, why am I lying on the lawn? What was that sander and what has today been all about? At Forcluse House, Chris has just finished giving Lady a power tool pedicure. Hopefully, it'll help alleviate her serious arthritis. Let's test out the new shoes, huh? Come on, girl. Up again. Up again. There we go. Very flash. <laughs> oh, look at that running. See, she's going OK, though. I think she's definitely moving more freely. I'd have to agree. The pedicure seems to have worked. Lady will also be getting dog arthritis tablets hidden in her favourite food, green beans. Oh, she can't resist, can she? You're a healthy living, green eating bean muncher, aren't you? <laughs> Before he leaves, Chris catches up with one of his former pets now living at the luxury estate, Mercedes the chicken. You ever seen a chicken hypnotised? I've heard that you can do it. Yeah. So what you do is you lie them flat, you tuck their head in, and you just stroke them down the middle. Hypnotising chooks is a real art form. They might look as though they fight it a little bit at the start, but eventually they enjoy it. They go into this deep state of relaxation. And I've got to say, Mercedes is one of my best subjects. You can do this to any chicken. Yep. Mercedes, you're making a goose yourself. Get up. I'll just clean up that little wound a bit. At home, the convalescing Rosie is getting around the clock attention. Oh, good girl. Angus's other dog, Gus, keeps a constant vigil by her bedside. Sometimes I find myself smiling because she looks like she's got little, you know, floaties on it. So, and that's the truth. It's just, you know, it's really weird sometimes. You, 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 sometimes you, you feel very sad and then sometimes you have to smile. Like that. <laughs> Rosie, good girl. As each day goes by, I'm seeing a little bit of an improvement. I don't think she's in a lot of pain, so that's been a real relief for me too. <laughs> Rosie. After Charlie's sleepover at the clinic, Chris is escorting the King Charles Spaniel home to reunite with Mrs Corswell and Mr Bojangles. Hey, Charlie boy, look who's here. Oh, look at my little Charlie. 
It turns out the octogenarian has plans to never forget her little spaniel, just like her last dog, Mickey. Mickey's in there and I say, say hello to Mickey in the morning, you know. And he's never replied to it, never. Remember this vividly, the man walking up those steps hmm. with this dog in his arms. And it was your Mickey. My Mickey. And it, it was so nice to get him back even like this. Yeah. Apparently he was stuffed by one of the museum uh, taxidermists, so he's got this sort of rather aggressive, wild tone. But the taxidermist didn't realise he's a family pet, not a wild animal. No. He's struggling a bit of... Oh, he collects the dust, obviously. I think he'd survive a vacuum best. cleaner job. Would you do the same thing with Charlie? Absolutely, because they have people to me. Mm. I mean, I, you, know, you don't do that to people either. <laughs> Hardly. Um, don't you have a, a house full of sort of uh, <laughs> corpses? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, oh dear? If you're going to stick around and be my buddy, aren't you, darling? My little doggy.